Where's the beginning? <laughs> oh, he he was normal. He was he was a, just a normal boy. He had fun all the time. I remember my uh, my parents who were conservative, to say the least. We weren't um, bad kids, and we didn't hang with gangs, and we weren't into drugs as teenagers. And through high school, there were no drugs in my high school experience. Had no no problems. Okay. No problems at all until war hole and drugs. Paul's first job, as, as I remember him telling me, was to um, an assemble a, a Honda motorcycle um, that was in a crate and told me he was very excited. He thought he had met um, people that were going to lead towards his future, that he, was, that he had a future in, in entertainment, in advertising, in movies, in pop culture. Uh, what I got back from Paul on the phone and in conversations while he was in New York and I was not there was that he was right on the cusp of uh, where he wanted to be. He felt like he was uh, um, headed in the right direction. He was excited about what he was doing, but he knew it was dangerous. Well, we didn't know then what Andy Warhol was or anything. The enchantment, the desire to be... Uh, to be a Mick Jagger or Keith Richards or a, a pirate or a, a, a fantasy person became real for him and for a lot of people during that period of time. And uh, here's a nice young boy and these guys are all weirdos. He became Paul America overnight. And he was huh. in with Andy Warhol. Yeah. Well, Andy Warhol ruined a number of young people. He had a lot of girls and a lot of boys and all on drugs and he was trying to make movies of them and all that stuff. There was music, there was drama, there was filming, there was drugs, there was sex, there was rock and roll. It was everything that anybody um, that was in the um, entertainment industry or in pop culture at the time would be attracted to. He had them giving him drugs all the time. And he would take movies of him in the swimming pool, sex, 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 you know, screwing in the water. And it was, uh, Paul would come home and tell us about it. And, but anyway. Uh, I felt that Warhol um, uh, promoted a, a wide open, uncontrolled, boundaryless, uh, environment intentionally. His cameras were rolling. Andy Warhol had them, had all these kids under drugs. Uh, maybe drawn to the super excitement of the superstardom of New York City. Maybe once you, maybe, I asked him this several times and maybe this is the explanation that once you've tasted that amount of notoriety and that amount of attention, that amount of excitement, that it becomes a drug in itself. Yeah, Andy Warhol was, was a god for the, all those kids. He was making, um, making money, making stars. Yeah, Andy Warhol gave him a girl. She, she was a daughter of a millionaire family in California. He described to me in detail how he uh, got her off a of heroin addiction uh, replacing it with uh, with speed. And the way he described his relationship with Edie was definitely one of, of love. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything different than that. He also had a relationship with a, with a girl named Debbie whom I never met that I, that I know of. May have met her in the factory, but I don't think I did. It was sex, it was orgies, it was so rotten in there you couldn't stand it. So he had uh, the ability to make a very deep, strong contact with individuals. He could share love very well. He uh, could express his emotions very well when he was given the chance and didn't need to be on drugs to do that. I saw this happen throughout his life uh, where the, the real essence of Paul was somebody who had a, a tremendous power, tremendous compassion, and um, uh, a tremendous ability to love and care for people. Yeah. They, they had orgies, good, and in, in the swimming pool, 
in any place. There'd be six on, on time, all schooling each other. It, the stuff Paul told, uh, would tell you, I said, get the hell out of that. And he would begin to tell me some of the stories of living basically on the street, hustling, um, hustling his life away. And um, I realized then that, that I, had, I started having fear for him. Uh, a lot of funny things they did. I called the, the sheriff. The sheriff came immediately and arrested Paul. We went to see him once when he was on base. I remember driving to the, uh, to the um, Army facility, and then uh, shortly thereafter got the phone call, hey, I need to get out of here. If you'll send me some medication, I think I can do it. So uh, we sent him some acid and some marijuana and a pair of sneakers. Had, he had a new, new, new motorcycle at that time, and he drove it up there to Woodstock, and then he came home with no motorcycle. He said he, he was on drugs, and he lost his motorcycle. That was a great show up there. It would be nice to have a more accurate timeline with no gaps, uh, and the more we, bring, we talk about his life and the time during the 60s, the more I realized that where there was um, a lot of, um, there were a lot of periods where uh, we didn't remember what was going on ourselves. Mm -hmm. That was the roaring 60s, yeah. is when that all happened. He um, envisioned himself as a, a very colorful character towards the end of his, of his of his life. He would visit family on a pretty regular basis, just stopping in, seeing how he, uh, seeing how everybody would do, and then when it got uncomfortable or he got bored, he'd take off. The next time I saw Paul, uh, he had arrived unannounced at the commune I was living at in Brown County, Indiana. And he was in, in uh, relatively good shape. He was um, coherent and cleaned up and um, and um, not on anything, and uh, had been working, and was just curious as to what I was getting into the next phase of my life, and um, he stayed on in Brown County. He had this driven um, obsession with uh, continuing to the next, the next hustle, the next deal, the next event, the next chapter. Hi, I'm Paul's nephew, Ryan Hill, and I need your help to tell the rest of Paul's story and turn the Paul America Project into a finished documentary. Please visit my campaign on Indiegogo.com and give if you can. Thank you.